In this video, we will present the development and rotation of the midcut. Development of intestinal lobes is characterized by rapid elongation, forming the primary intestinal lobe. At its apex, it remains in open connection with the yolk sac by way of the fecal induct. As a result of the rapid growth, the abdominal cavity becomes too small to contain all intestinal lobes, and they enter the intraembryonic cavity in the umbilical cord during the sixth week. This is the physiological umbilical herniation. The loop has the cephalic and a caudal limbs. The cephalic limb of the loop develops into the distal part of the duodenum, the jejunum, and part of the ilium. The caudal limb becomes the lower portion of the ilium, the cecum, the appendix, the ascending colon, and the proximal two-thirds of the transverse colon. The primary intestinal loop rotates around an axis formed by the superior mesenteric orgy. When viewed from the front, this rotation is counterclockwise. Rotation occurs during herniation, about 90 degrees, as well as during the return of the intestinal lobes into the abdominal cavity, the remaining 180 degrees, and it amounts to approximately 270 degrees when it is complete. After the 90 degrees rotation in the herniation, the cephalic limb becomes on the right side and the caudal limb becomes on the left side. And the coiling of small intestinal lobes and the formation of the fecal bud is complete. As a result of the expansion of the abdominal cavity, the intestinal loop begins to re-enter through the cavity during the 10th week. The cephalic limb re-enters first, and the first part to re-enter the abdominal cavity is the proximal portion of the trigena, which comes to lie on the left side. After the entrance of the cephalic limb, the caudal limb starts to re-enter, and the cecal bud is the last portion of the gut to get back to the abdominal cavity. Temporarily, it lies in the right upper quadrant directly below the right lobe of the liver. From here, it descends into the right iliac fossa, placing the ascending colon and hepatic flexure on the right side of the abdominal cavity. Occasionally, however, the rotation amounts to 90 degrees only. When this occurs, the colon and cecum are the first portions of the gut to re-enter from the umbilical cord, and they settle on the left side of the abdominal cavity. The later returning loops then move more and more to the right, resulting in a left-sided colon. The first rotation of the intestinal loop occurs when the primary loop rotates 90 degrees clockwise. In this abnormality, the transverse colon passes behind the duodenum and lies behind the superior mesenteric origin. 